in this segment from the Board of County Commissioners, Eddie Gokenauer. Good morning. Good to see you, Ed. Good to see you. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, you are the liaison to Parks and Rec. I am. We currently do not have a director of Parks and Rec, so how do the day-to-day operations flow in that situation? Who's in charge? Who makes final decisions? Any idea how that's working out? Oh, yeah. The uh, I mean, right from the start, the executive board uh, uh, meets regularly with the staff and uh, gives direction and, and answers questions and whatnot. So uh, our board is very involved, and, uh, and they're, they're doing a good job. I mean, I would almost say it's not missed a beat, and... Uh, and that's a good thing. Well, that's a plus. How is the search for an executive director going? And how, how much involved are you as the liaison to the county commission? Uh, I'm not involved at all. And um, the, once again, the, the board will, will drive that train. Uh, I think that they've already posted the job. So, uh, and we're, we're doing a very wide search. So hopefully we can get somebody in this seat uh, real soon and, and get going. Yeah. Obviously, succeeding Steve Catlett was not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, I don't know that you will ever have another Steve Catlett running a Parks and Rec department in uh, in a county uh, like uh, like Berkeley County has been. Uh, but no one thought replacing him would be this difficult. Uh, we've gone through two so far, and for a variety of reasons, and no one discusses personnel issues for. Uh, obvious and good reasons, uh, but for a variety of reasons, the two directors who succeeded to Steve have not worked out. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I mean, Steve Steve left a very big void there. You know, he he did a tremendous job uh, in this community, very very well connected, uh, communicated extremely well, uh, did a lot of stuff with a little bit of nothing, and uh, but he had connections. You know. It, um, he worked well with everybody, and uh, I'm not saying at times he wasn't frustrated, you know, mm-hmm. of course. I mean, that's just the way life is. But, um, you know, he, he knew there was another day, so he didn't burn his bridges, and uh, he was very smart about what he did. And like I say, just having the, even the corporate uh, sponsorship, like, you know, the Quad Gym, the, the Randy Smith Center, you know, those connections that he was able to work with and get things accomplished. So, you know— Whenever you follow somebody that has dedicated his entire life to that and made a, a, a tremendous impact in this county, that's a difficult, you know. So, so the next person coming in, they doesn't need to be another Steve Callen. You know, they need to be their own person. But I would highly recommend that whoever does take that position that they meet with Steve Callen and say, "Hey, give me some." Give me some inside information here. Give me, give me some guidance. You know, if you want to turn off uh, good help, you, you're going to fail. So I, I, would, I would really encourage uh, whoever it is that their communication skills be extremely good and, uh, and open. Uh, this community uh, supports Parks and Rec. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they're probably a little bit concerned about, you know, the activity over the last several years that we don't have a director that's, that's been able to stay in place. But um, the community will support Parks and Rec as long as they know they're getting something in return. The, uh, Jim, uh, Jim Klein had a community meeting about some of the situations going on with uh, Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. uh, Lambert Park, the basketball situation. Uh, I guess uh, a couple of dozen people attended that uh, meeting. Uh, were you, you were there, were you not? At Absolutely. It? Right. Yeah. What did you take from that meeting in regards to the public's feelings about Parks and Rec right now? Because what's being related to me is Parks and Rec is not communicating as well with the public as it should. And when that happens, people start to suspect nefarious things are going on. That's absolutely true. Um, We've we've known that for a while, that communication was lacking. Uh, Good, open communication with the public is critical. Uh, What a lot of people there uh, really and truly did not understand is that the pool was up and ready. I mean, that's that's what got everybody so much up in arms was Lambert Pool. The pool was ready to go. It was full. It was running. And then they, they determined that they had this leak. So, um, you know, it was ready to go within a week uh, of operation. But truly, at the end of the day, it was all about a lack of good, open communication. And, and the folks were frustrated. And, and I understand that. I get it. So, uh, you know, the park board has to do a better job of communicating. The park board itself, its members, they're not elected. They're appointed. All right. They do not do public interviews. I've, I've talked with Chris Palmer, who was formerly the president of that board. 
Uh, and he and I had a great conversation a couple of weeks ago, about 45 minutes long. Uh, no holds barred. Everything was on the table in terms of discussion point. But as much as I tried to make my case for why I thought it was a good idea for Parks and Rec board members to do interviews, Chris, Chris held steady that this is not what we do. We don't want to get political. Uh, it, once we have a director, it's their job to be the face of Parks and Rec, and, and they should be the person who talks to the media. I disagree with that. I think if you're on a board and you're serving the public it's, with something like Parks and Rec, you should do some interviews to answer questions as to why is this and, and why is that. But I can't compel people to do interviews that don't want sure. to do them. Sure. So in, in regards to this right now where we don't have a director and the, the board won't do interviews, how do you communicate better? Okay. Well, I was not really aware that that was the position. I knew that that was Chris's position. You know, he, I knew that Chris did not like to do interviews. Um, well, he, but, but, he, he, has, he has invited the other board members to do interviews if they want to, but none of them want to do it. Okay, well, um, maybe I'll encourage him. Look, I, I, it's important, you know, you texted me yesterday evening and said, hey, can you be on today? Sure. You know, I, I think it's important to communicate. And uh, you know, certainly not everybody always agrees with what you have to say, and that's fine. But, but it's important to be able to communicate and the people understand where you are with your thought process. Can you put some meat on the bones here? What isn't being communicated? I feel like... It's well, it's just like... Uh, I, I don't think that it was communicated real well that the that the pool was uh, inoperable. Okay, I, I think that there was they were trying. You know, instead of communicating, they were actually working and trying to you know dig the hole, try to find the, the leak and whatnot. Uh, you know, they they made arrangements for transportation to take children from Lambert to War Memorial. That was not communicated well into the public. You know, so when you when you just basically ignore uh, the community's request for information, then they... they is there a website? I mean, well, there is a website, but if, if you don't put that information on there, oh, you're so not the, read okay. it. All right. uh, it's, it's all forms of communication, whether it's on the web or, or verbal. It just or, was not utilized. It just wasn't, yeah, it, it wasn't done. This Parks and Rec system and, and the growth within our community has to be, to me anyway, a, a position that someone would would be envious to take. So I would imagine this search for an executive director uh, hopefully brings in some very good candidates who would look at, at where we're at, how we're growing, the system that's already here, and the potential expansion of that system. Are you hopeful uh, uh, that we're going to be able to to bring someone in that's going to have some very good experience and and be able to take us from where we are now into the future? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I would hope that whoever uh, applies for this position uh, is already familiar with what we have here. You know, it's kind of hard and. I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but it's kind of hard to bring in somebody from the from the outside who's never ever been here whatsoever, and say, "Okay, you're hired. You're now in charge." Well, you don't even know where Rooney Park is. It's one of your parks, you know. So th that's very difficult for a person who is not from here to, and then to be able to meet and get with the the folks in this county. Now, now, I just don't mean the upper echelon of the county. I, I mean the, the children get with their parents so that you're very approachable by and recognizable that when you walk into a facility or you go to a ballpark that somebody can say, there's our, there's our park director over there. Let me go ask him his question. He needs to be recognized. He needs to be in the community. He needs to be part of our community. So, um, yeah. I, I, I am very helpful, and, and I do feel that, that the right choices will be made. And But it, it's got – it's somebody that has to be uh, in tune with the expansion of the parks. It has to be somebody in, uh, that understands the recreational side of, of our of our rec leagues and, and, and the community. You, you have to know the working parts of our community. Eddie Gokenauer, our guest here from the Berkeley County Commission. He is the liaison to the Parks and Rec Board and has been since he got on the commission, if I recall. Yes, sir. Uh, Eddie, a lot of people thought once uh, Steve got on, he would want that post, but I guess Steve had had enough of it by then. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it was it was one of those deals where Steve knew that he kind of needed to separate himself from it. He didn't want to overshadow anybody that was there. Uh, but quite honestly, it's impossible to not though. It is, but at the same time, 
you know, Steve and I have talked. Um, look, who knows more about about Parks and Rec than Steve Callett mm-hmm. in Berkeley County? So I will be encouraging him to rethink his thoughts uh, about being on that park board. Um, Sounds like you need to muscle him a little bit there. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, catch, him in, catch him in. He's a big guy. He's a know? big guy, yeah. <laughs> uh, got a long reach. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you up with that jab, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, I have intentionally uh, stayed uh, off the fire board uh, in particular. So, uh, but that may change, you know. So, it's, yeah. I think it's time for both of us to get reengaged on the things that were near and dear to us i I agree i understand how once you get out of it you don't want to overshadow who's taken over for you Uh, that makes sense you want to let them be their own person but on the other hand the institutional knowledge that you have for uh, emergency response the institutional knowledge that steve has for parks and rec by withdrawing from that it's almost like you're cheating the county of knowledge that the people now running those things should have, but don't for the simple fact that they're not you and they weren't around as long. Yeah, well, like I say, I, you know, I, I'm thinking that maybe we're we're getting back to that point where say, look, you know, let's do what we do mm-hmm. and play to your strength. Yeah, right, Matt. When you look at at, at Parks and Rec and where we are right now, uh, funding is always an issue. Um, How is that going, and what are ways that, you know, as a county commissioner, that that the county can continue to support and see the growth that is going on in Parks and Rec? Yeah, well, uh, Matt, they currently, um, by our decision, they receive half of the hotel motel tax. Uh, The other half, by statute, goes to the CVB, but we've chosen to give the other half to Parks and Rec. And those numbers are up. Uh, they've been up for the last couple of years. So they're, financially, they're doing fine. And that does not uh, exclude the capital improvements uh, monies that we give for capital improvements uh, for our parks, as, as well as what the city. I mean, the city is a very big supporter of our park system. So I think that, um, I think that they're being funded well. I do. And, uh, you know, there's always <laughs> everybody has a need for more, you know, and I get that, you know, you know, I get it. But, um, but financially, I think we're fine. OK. Yeah. Well, uh, in regards to the next park that's being built, Eddie, what's the progress and how much money is it going to take? I know Bob Williams rolled out when he was the director, rolled out a master plan on this program, I guess, maybe a year ago or so. And it was pretty impressive. Yeah, well, we have we actually have two parks in in construction phase. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the park at the north end uh, down at nine hundred one uh, is uh, a ten acre park, and uh, we we begin to slowly get started on that. And uh, Panhandle Builders has been a major uh, assistance and contributor to that project. Uh, the park on the south end, which is a twenty two acre park across from the high school. Um, that is going through our engineering phase right now. Uh, the number that they threw out was uh, kind of staggering. The number that, that of the design that they did was a $15 million park. Uh, we cannot afford a $15 million park. So uh, we've asked them to look, let's get back to reality and build something that we can afford in this county where people can enjoy it. Uh, we do plan on being able to build that particular park out uh, in phases. You know, we're, we're early in. We may go ahead and, you know, get our infrastructure in, get the parking lot in, get a walking path. Uh, Macy's uh, has donated money for uh, three different uh, nice pavilions. So that will that park will get a, a really nice pavilion. Uh, uh, thankful for Macy's. But, um, you know, just get some of the basics in there so that people can start enjoying it, and then we'll build the park as as we go and, and can afford it. How does the budgetary process work? When we decide to build a park or a series of parks, are we deciding not to build a fire station? I mean, is it is it the same money from different pockets of the same suit? Well, um kind of a harsh way to put it. I, 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 well, no, not really. John's a former firefighter. <laughs> yeah. so. no, I, no, I get it. Uh, we're we're working on that, John. I think mm-hmm. you're aware of that. Sure. I, I spoke with this uh, in the past about the TIF funds, mm-hmm. and and those TIF funds hopefully will generate the monies needed uh, to cover the debt service on the new firehouse on the north end of the building uh, of the county. So I'm hoping that within two years uh, that building will be underway, 
uh, that's that would be my goal to be able to get it uh, but that's not an additional fire station, right? That's that's rep- replacing that's the correct. Beddington. Yes. So I'm talking in terms of actually growing the number of fire stations. If, if you, we feel understaffed as a county here, just having come from Fairfax County, where the fire station grows like McDonald's, but um, is is that is that the way the priority system works? I mean, is it just a big pile of money and we have to decide whether to build a park or a fire station or a police station? No, it's separate. It's separate monies. Okay. Um, you know. I'm, you know, most of the money for Parks and Rec is going to come through hotel, motel, and our capital improvements as well as community involvement. Uh, the the firehouse will, you know, I'm sure that, uh, the, you know, the fire board already owns the land. Uh, if we do the TIF, uh, those those de- those details need to be worked out about uh, who's going in there. We're hoping to be able to get police, fire, and EMS under one roof. I, I think that's uh, the right thing to do especially with the growth in the north end um so that's a that's a really a separate pot of money uh per se between the fire fee and the tiff money uh going into that eddie is the contract up for the lobbying firm for the county yeah uh, last week we opened up qualifications and we had one firm that bid or or submitted qualifications same firm that has been representing you yes access strategies all right are you attempting to make any changes improvements amendments to the previous agreement well i i don't i don't know i mean i've always struggled with the money uh with i always thought that was it was a lot of money what Um, what was the bid this time around it was no bid it was just for qualifications i see yeah so um you know we've Gary, you know, obviously we'll go over those documents to make sure everything is in line, and then uh, we will put the job out for bid and, you know, see what what happens. Go from there. I think uh, it would seem to be fairly simple in that you see, oh, what did it cost and what did we get back in benefits? Are those numbers readily available that you can make an easy, here's what's on the left, here's what's on the right decision? I think so. Um, You know, Last year, in particular, the jail bill, uh, you know, I had a delegate uh, text me, say the jail bill is done. It's dead. And uh, it wasn't. Uh, our lobbyists went back and, and reignited it and got it going and, and got it across the finish line, you know, right at the end. Um, I, I tell you, you know, I've been very open and, and uh, about about access strategies and the amount of money uh, that was spent to, to, to employ them. But... I can tell you that in this last year, I've seen value. I've seen a lot of value. Uh, I can't go into total detail about it, but I can I can tell you that they did us a tremendous job in this county. So there was some infrastructure money. Let me let me just let me back up. Mm-hmm. There's some infrastructure money that we were trying to get for uh, water in particular, and uh, that that money was kind of falling between the cracks and. Uh, and Summer was able to, to get us in front of the right people and keep track of that funds and uh, uh, keep that money alive because it was it was kind of lost. So and it was a substantial amount of money. It was, it was around $25 million. So uh, she was able to go and, and kind of resurrect those funds and, mm-hmm. and get them back up uh, where they needed to be so, so that our water district could get it. Now, they haven't received it yet because they're uh, finishing up a FONSI study, which don't ask me exactly what all that is, but uh, that's what it's called. A. Hey. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, sit on it. <laughs> there's a uh, you know there's a study that needs to be done for the for the state to release those funds. So Eddie, thank you. We've got a final minute coming up with uh, County Commissioner Eddie Gilkenauer. Right, that's correct. By the way, not a county councilman, county commissioner.